Hello, Mike Dudley here. I'm going to talk a little bit about specimen prep for a BMD performance test. I'm going to go through all the basics uh, during this presentation. You're going to hear me talk about some specifications, and you're also going to hear me probably talk about a few Mike-isms. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've got some preferences I think that work, work better than others. To start out with, let's talk about batching. And let's talk about the equipment you're going to batch with. As you can see here, anytime we're batching, we need flat bottom scoops, flat pans. We all know this. But if you can see, I hope you can tell this on the video, there's a difference in these two flat pans, uh, flat scoops. The one in my left hand is sort of a cast aluminum type uh, scoop. And this one's made of a very thin metal. The point is they're both flat, but... When we, do, when we batch our specimens, we add baghouse fines, and we know we add these baghouse fines to account for, pl account for plant breakdown. But when I use a scoop that's this thick just to produce my specimens, and I come over here in a pan, and I try to scoop along the bottom of a flat surface, I end up leaving minus 200 material behind. So it's sort of counterintuitive to be using a, a scoop that, that is not as accurate or as finely tuned as a thin metal scoop when I'm going to be adding baghouse fines. So I always tell everybody, if you've got one of these cast aluminum scoops, donate it to your aggregate supplier. They don't pay attention to dust like we do. So with that being said, I'm going to use the thin metal flat bottom scoop and I'm going to begin batching. Just going to go through the process of batching here. I got a large flat pan. I'm going to add my material in different quadrants in case I need to remove some standard batching procedures. To begin with, we're going to be starting by adding some uh, number 78s. I need 500, I'm going to tear it off. I need 579 grams. Come over here, flat on the pan, straightforward. As I scoop from each one of these pans, I want to treat these pans just like it's my stockpile. I want to work left to right or right to left at always, all times. I just don't want to randomly be scooping in the middle just to take my weight. I want to treat it just like a stockpile. All right. So. All right. Ooh. Point two off. We'll take it. Add this back to my stockpile. Next, I'm going to get my eight, 347.9. Again, flat on the pan, straightforward, scoop up, just like a loader bucket would do. You're welcome to use running weights. It's a personal preference. I like to tear it off, so I just hit the tear button, and I'm going to add 347.9. Little much this time. There we go. Put this back in my pan. Next will be my wash screenings. Same weight. Again, flat on the blue pan, straightforward. Scoop up just like a loader bucket would do. I'm tearing it off. There we go. Add that back to my stockpile. And finally, ver the, my last virgin aggregate is my number 10 screening. Again, flat. Tear it off. A 
Ooh, a little bit over there. Okay. And also, I need to add my baghouse fines, as we spoke about earlier, to account for plant breakdown. I already know that I have about 1% breakdown during production, so that's what I'm going to be adding my baghouse fines. 23.2. Tear it off. Use a spoon or something small for this. In the middle. There we go. All right. Next, I like to stir this aggregate up because I have a total weight on my virgin aggregate and I want to confirm I've got this correct. So I'll mix all this up. All right, now what I want to do is verify my virgin aggregate weight is correct. To do that, I get a clean pan, put it on the scale, Tear it off. Add all my virgin aggregate to this pan. And I'm targeting 623.7 and I got 623.3. I'm gonna leave it alone. So my virgin aggregate now is batched up. But, we're doing a, a wrap mix design. What does that mean? That means I need to add some wrap material, but notice I did not add the wrap material to my virgin aggregate. The wrap needs to be kept in a separate pan because it can't be in the oven as long as the virgin material can be. So for that, I got a separate pan for my wrap. Again, using my thin metal scoop, I'm gonna tear this off and I'm gonna batch my wrap weight which is 735.3. Again, treat, treating the wrap just like a stockpile. Flat on the pan, scoop forward. Here we go. Seven thirty five point three, seven thirty five point four. We'll take it. All right. Now, when it comes to batching my sample, it took two pans, one for my virgin aggregate, one for my wrap. I'm going to place my virgin aggregate in my oven to get hot. I'm going to keep the wrap out separately. 30 minutes prior to the time I plan on mixing this sample, I will add the wrap directly to the virgin aggregate. We'll show you how that works as well. All right, here's the virgin aggregate. I just took it out of this oven, uh, brought it out because I'm gonna be adding my wrap. When I add my wrap to my virgin aggregate prior to mixing, I like to mix that in as well. I stir it in the same way it'll be mixed up in your plant. Your, your aggregate and your wrap gets mixed up before you, your, at your plant your binder is introduced. So just give it a couple turns, mix it up a little good, and then put this sample back in the oven for 30 minutes prior to mixing. Now we're ready to mix our sample. Got my mixing bucket. Gonna grab my aggregate that already has my wrap in it. It's been mixed in there for 30 minutes. I'm gonna tear my bucket off because again, I know my combined weight for my virgin aggregate and my wrap, and I want to verify I got that correct. Dump it in my bucket. I'm off by three grams. Take to account that, I'm going to add a little bit of wrap.
Ah, there we go. Now I'm going to make a pocket for me to put my binder in. Grab my binder. Tear it off. I need 106 grams. Whoa. Bingo. Okay, now we're ready to go to the mixer. You won't be showing it. Once your specimen is completely mixed, you have to put it in a pan for conditioning or aging. When I transfer my sample or specimen to my pan, what, a, what you got to be cautious of is the size pan you use. This, this size pan is a typical gyratory uh, specimen pan. The specification calls for your mix to be conditioned or aged between 25 and 50 millimeters. It's one to two inches. Well, a typical ideal CT specimen or IDT CT specimen is only about 2,400, 2,500 grams. It's half that weight, so I would only need half the pan. So it's important for people to realize that when you're doing performance testing, you need smaller pans. This happens to be a pan that I picked up myself at Target. It's about 10 bucks. I think it's called a nine inch by nine inch square pan. It works really well to give me the proper pan dimensions. Uh, I've also came across a different restaurant style pan, a little longer um, and narrower. It's more of a rectangle than a square. What I like about this is when, when I'm done with my conditioning, I have to transfer this specimen to a gyratory mold for compaction. My gyratory mold is only six inches at the top. Nine inches doesn't fit inside of there. This one being four inches this way will actually allow me to transfer my specimen straight into the gyratory mold in one lift in a much easier facet. Also, one more thing I want to point out when we're doing this conditioning is, we have, during the specimen prep for mix design specimens, there's a condition called short-term aging and long-term aging. The short-term aging is done in these pans at 25 to 50 millimeters thick. When it comes to doing what's called the long-term aging on your ideal CT specimens, you have to transfer this mix to a larger pan. And the specimen thickness can only be equal to the nominal maximum aggregate size. I know it doesn't look like it, but these are both 12.5 mixes and they're the same weight. In order for me to transfer this weight and spread it out uniformly and get it to one aggregate size, one nominal maximum aggregate size thickness, it took me two gyratory size pans. That is very important when it comes to the long-term aging. And that's something I want to comment and, and make sure you guys realize, you need an, uh, for us to do the long-term aging, which is five specimens, and if I need two pans per specimen, I need an oven large enough to hold 10 of these large pans at the same time. That is not a typical size oven in a lot of our production labs. We don't tend to have ovens quite that big. Yes, I am referring to one of these larger floor model ovens, okay? So I wanted to point that out that when it comes to doing your long-term aging, you're gonna need some bigger ovens and, and you need to spread it out to one layer thickness. All right, with that being said, I got my specimen in my pan and I'm gonna place it in the oven for two hours of short-term conditioning. During your short-term conditioning of any of your performance test specimens, 
You're required by specification at 60 minute intervals to stir your mix. So it's important you bring your, your specimen out and you stir it up, you mix it up. You wanna, that's to assure uniform conditioning. So you just use a spatula, stir it up, and then put it back in the oven for another 60 minutes. I like to stick a thermometer in it too. Here we are. All right, now once your conditioning period is done, you transfer your specimen to your gyratory mold for compaction. And one lift. Level it off. And disc, take it to the compactor. And once you have compacted your specimen, you want to cool it to room temperature before you verify your voids meet specification. Now let's talk about uh, how to produce specimens from plant produced mix. And I'm gonna start out with another micism. All too often I go to plants or facilities and I see these pans of mix and these large scoops. Again, it's a flat bottom scoop but it's covered in asphalt. And I have to think, how often do I see a loader bucket at an asphalt plant covered in asphalt? You don't. Just like you don't scoop asphalt and load it into a truck or to load it into anything else, you shouldn't be scooping a sample with a flat bottom scoop or any other kind of scoop to get your lab made specimens. So I always tell everybody, if you got uh, when you always know what's going on when you walk into a lab and you see these real nasty scoops and these pans that have material that have been baked and baked in there for long periods of time. This should never happen in any quality control, quality assurance environment. So with that being said, let me grab my sample and begin splitting. For the purpose of this video, we have a plant produced sample in this canvas bag because we're not at a production location. So and before I actually begin to separate my uh, production specimens out of this bag, I first like to apply what I like to call a lab release agent. This is standard PAM like you use to get at the grocery store. I like to apply a thin coat. I just spray it on my countertop and notice I'm, I'm taking a rag. The intent here is to just leave a thin coat. I'm going to be wiping this off. I'm not leaving it puddled on the counter. Thin coat. Now, I take my specimen that I want to split out and I dump it from the bag or pan or whatever I may have. I'm not scooping. I dump it on the countertop. Now, I need a large piece of metal of some sort because I want to roll this specimen over several times prior to quartering or splitting out my sample. Do that, I just roll it up on top. All right, once I've done this a few times, I want a conjugal pile. I'm gonna round it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna separate it. To do that, I go straight down, separate, and then I'm gonna go 90 degrees and separate it again. OK, 
Okay. Now, I remember from my lab mixed design specimens that I need a specimen weight of 2465. I'm going to tear it off in a pan. And I'm going to use a splitting knife to obtain my sample. From this quadrant, I'm going to try to obtain one sample. Okay, I need another 150 grams. There we go. Once I've gotten my proper sample weight, I'm going to place this pan in the uh, oven to bring it up to temperature for co compaction. I don't want to do any additional aging or condition of these specimens. I just want to raise the temperature to compaction temperature. Now, for my next specimen, I'm going to remove this quadrant just out of the way and I'll take my second specimen from this quadrant. Likewise, any mix that's left over, I'll move over and continue till I have four performance test specimens out of this bag of material. With what's left over at the end, I'm not going to discard it. I may need it for something, but I won't be using it to actually produce a, an individual specimen, as this may have segregated more than the larger masses of mix that I've moved around. That being said, let's talk a little bit more about sample size and specimen weight. Here's a good example of the amount of material needed to make a gyratory specimen, approximately 5,000 grams. When I'm doing ideal CTs, I'm only going to be using half that much. So it's important that we look at the size container we're using both for lab-produced mixes and plant-produced mixes. And it's again important that I have a large enough oven to be able to bring all these specimens up to compaction temperature. Because when I'm splitting down my sample, I want to split down all my specimens as fast as I can, rather than trying to keep a large mass of material warm. 